Hi and uh, welcome to the third uh, vidcast for December 2010. We'll get straight on by going to the um, blog, uh, What the L is Happening blog, which the seven fives are posted in. It's been a slight change uh, this time in as much as I've already posted the blog and I've already posted separately the podcast. Uh, as you will see here on the screen, if I scroll down, the podcast has been embedded. Let me just zoom in so you can see it a bit better. Um, with Postress, when you just add an attachment, the uh, MP3 file is embedded at the bottom. And I thought this was quite a nice way for you to be able to access the podcast. And of course, as you can see, you can download them as well by clicking on that little button. Okay, so that, that's the slight change. The blog is here. The first find is uh, an article by Fiona Salvich. I'm going into the article itself. As, as you can see, it's called Don't Let Facebook Harm Your Career. It's um, a good safeguarding re resource. It's aimed at new teachers and it's talking about uh, the hassles that can be caused if you don't think carefully about your Facebook presence. As I've put in the blog, there is a section that says, it's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. So don't expose your private life to public humiliation. Take precautions with your online exploits. As I say, it's well worth having a look at. It's um, the address has been at the top of the screen. Okay, the second find really is, um, many of you may have come across it already. It doesn't matter whether you're new to Twitter or a seasoned tweeter. Uh, there's much more to it than you think. And basically, Twitter have has a glossary from hash to Z where you can actually um, get to grips with the language that's used um, in the various elements of Twitter itself. So if I click on uh, you, for example, it'll jump down and it's got meanings of unfollow, URL, URL shortener, user ID, etc. This may be perhaps useful for people who are new to technology and or um, perhaps some of the chronologically enhanced uh, learners that uh, adult and community learning in particular are dealing with. Right, the next find, uh, well, my daughter actually saw this at work, this sort of copper coloured moon, and my wife was very annoyed that uh, she didn't. Um, basically, uh, the last time a lunar eclipse and winter solstice actually coincided is open to dispute. The United States Naval Observatory reckons that it was 1638. Starhawk, who's a prominent Wiccan, puts it at 1544. But whenever it was, it doesn't happen that often. So this time-lapse video of that solstice on the 21st of December was taken by William Castleman and it is a cracking uh, video I'll just run it while I'm talking to you at the moment but it, it does go through the the stages and as I say it's one of the nicest um, photo laps that I've seen for a long while and you'll see the shadow sort of coming across the bottom corner of the moon at the moment I think ultimately the, the important part is when the shadow is over it and it just suddenly reappears as a, as a, as a copper moon. I'm not going to spoil it. You can see that for yourselves by visiting the address that's been at the top of the screen. And while we're talking about that, the next find is a, another video clip. It's on YouTube. It's called Water Drop Shot in 10,000 frames a second and it's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology who have used technology to have a look at a water drop in very slow motion and it's changed an awful lot of ideas. Again I'm not going to spoil it by actually going through it in detail but you can see the, the, the setup 
and the fact that uh, the people from it are having great fun. Okay, I'm not going to go through it because, as I say, you'll, you'll probably enjoy it yourselves far more. The uh, next find is really for, again, the chronologically enhanced, those who want a bit of nostalgia, as well as those who are engaged in um, media. Uh, it's called Radio Lovers. There are a whole load of radio uh, programs here that you can actually listen to. Comedies, dramas, mysteries, varieties, western, sci-fi, music, and so on. So if we take, for example, comedies, let's just click on it. There you go. There's a whole load there. A date with Judy. Let's just jump down a bit. Let's zoom in so you can see them. Hang on. That's better. Those are the ones that uh, are on the screen itself. Okay, Laurel and Hardy there. Let's just escape. Okay, and they say that there are more coming soon. And basically, if you choose on any of those, let's take the Bob Hope Show. You then got 1947, 48, 49, and so on uh, with Al Johnson. Shall we listen to the 47 one? Bear with me. Here we go. After giving away four Chevrolets every seven days, listen for details tonight. Not sure whether you'll actually hear that, but. Uh, one of the points that I want to, to make more than anything else is the fact that media literacy, for example, or that clip, if you could hear it, showed how entertainment has often been commercialised. The first few minutes of that particular programme and many of the others were used to showcase the show's sponsors. Parallels to the use of product placement in various films and TV shows these days. For those involved in podcasting, the old radio shows like this are um, valuable for learning about pacing of a story, voice inflection, and the use of sound effects. And it does provide a glimpse of entertainment from times when writing, sound effects, and voice were the prevailing means for delivering stories to large audiences. No special effects there. Um, on the issue of copyrights, Radio Lover's website says that it believes that those shows are now in the public domain and are no longer protected. I'm not sure that that would stand up in a court of law, but again, go and have a listen to see what is actually on offer. The next find is um, Nick Peachy's blog. Um, Nick has uh, featured before. He um, provides tips, resources and teaching materials to help English as foreign language and English as a second language teachers to use ICT and new technology. And basically Nick was going through the process of writing a book and discovered that it was taking him too long and things were getting out to date. So he has come up with this blog that's five tasks to teach yourself to teach with technology. And if I scroll down the page, we'll just zoom in on task one. Just bear with me. There you go. Creating your learning journal. And it goes around using Penzu that I have recommended. Um, and uh, uh, you can download the task or read it on Scribid itself and it goes through how you can read the task, download the task uh, and obviously work through it yourselves. The second task, create an online storage for your teaching images and again it goes through how to set up a Flickr account and so on. You may well find that there are some practitioners who are a little bit unsure of technology, not very confident. They may well be very useful for them and or for staff development of uh, learners and other stakeholders. Last but not least, the final find is really to flag up that on our website, again the address is at the top in the Zipdexy library, we now have the common inspection 
uh, framework equality and diversity resources available for you to download to use on your VLE for staff development etc. I know that many of you couldn't attend the event which uh, was very well subscribed considering the weather um, and I know that many of you have accessed the uh, resource from the e-magazine supplements but this is a downloadable version. All you need to do is to go onto the website. There are the whole um, 28 okay, um, downloadable resources there. If you click on number 28, that is the Common Inspection Framework Equality and Diversity, it will actually take you through to the download site. And if you click on the download, you will um, be able to get those resources. It is a large file, it will take some time, so make sure that you set some time aside to actually do it. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, I may get one more in before the new year, I'm not sure.